Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with LearnVisualStudio.net. In this video, we're going to talk about arrays. Now, to extend our analogy from earlier, you can think of an array as a bucket that contains other buckets. You declare an array just like any other variable with a data type and such. However, the array contains more than one value. Another way to think of it is like a sequence of data, and you can access any given item in that sequence given its index, or rather the position inside of the sequence, the array that you want to access. So what I want to do is create a quick example of an array in action, and we'll actually revisit this example a couple of times, the first time using a kind of longhand form, and then we'll start looking at variations of arrays. So I'm going to start creating a new project called Understanding arrays and again just follow along as I type out this little code example notice the use of square brackets this time int square bracket space Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the declaration and the assignment of values inside of our array. First of all, you can see here in line number 12 that we're defining an array of integers. And just to point out a few things, you can see the use of square brackets as I pointed out a moment ago. The square brackets are used in the declaration to declare an array of type int called numbers. Then on that same line of code, we're defining the array of ints to have five values, or rather five elements, again using the square brackets to define the number of elements that will be in our array. So then in lines 13 through 17, we're setting the individual elements of the array to an integer value. So for example, let's look at line number 14, numbers sub 1 equals the value 8. It means that in the second element of the array, store the numerical value 8. Now it's extremely important to remember that arrays are zero based, meaning that you count the element of the array starting with zero as the first element. Uh, quite honestly, this causes those who are new to software development a little bit of confusion. And we'll see what happens if you forget this fact in just a moment. Uh, by the way, whenever we use the square brackets in this capacity, we refer to them as the array or index access operator. Okay, It's what we'll use throughout uh, to access a specific element of the array. Then in line number 19, we're retrieving the value that we placed into a specific element of the array, in this case, position 1, or in other words, the second element, and we're displaying it using a console.writeLine statement. So honestly, this last part, the two-string part, is superfluous as we learned before. Console.writeLine can accept an integer value. It'll do the conversion necessary to print it to screen. I just wanted to show that we can use the two-string method because what's returned from numbers sub 1 is an integer just like any other integer. There's nothing special about it per se. So now if we run the application, we'll see the number eight is displayed. Again, why is that? Because we just picked a single item in our array to display in our console.write line. All right, so let's have a little fun with this. What happens if we go here and we add a sixth item, so element five equals the value 42. Notice currently we don't get any squiggly lines, everything looks great. We attempt to run the application and we get a runtime error that says index out of range exception. In other words, 
the index is out of range, it's out of bounds to borrow a sports phrase. Uh, let's do this, let's stop the execution of the application and comment out that line of code. And also let's comment out that line of code too and move on. So the next thing I wanna do is show how to use a for loop and I use that tab tab twice to use the code snippet, pretty neat. And under length, I'm gonna do numbers, which is the name of our array, dot length. So this is a special property that will give us the total number of items that have been defined in our array. Inside of the code block, I'm gonna to go to console dot right line and then numbers, and we'll open a square bracket and then use I, that's our iterator that we declared in the for declaration, and then we'll two string here. All right, now if we run the application, we will iterate through all of the items in our array. Every one of the uh, items in the sequence will be displayed to screen because of our for loop. So arrays and iteration statements like the for loop kind of go hand in hand. They're often used together. So the key notion here is that I now represents something meaningful. It's not just one, two, three, four, five. It's not just a number. It's rather one of uh, the items in the sequence of our array. So I think that's the importance here. By assigning I to uh, and equating it with the number of items in our array, we're able to use it in that capacity like we have here. Okay, so let's have some more fun. Let's comment out. In fact, I'm just gonna select all of these and use the comment out button on our toolbar. Go right above the for loop and I want to take a different approach at assigning initial values to each element of our array. All right, so we were able to duplicate at least, uh, what, six lines of code here in just one line of code by both declaring and then initializing the values uh, for each element of our array using this open curly brace syntax, close curly brace, then using values, each of them an integer value, separated by commas. Will it work? Let's go ahead and run it again, and we get the exact same result. And so we're gonna use a similar syntax to this when we work with a more full-featured version of arrays called collections. Uh, they're really not the same, but they kind of do the same sorts of things. We'll talk about collections a little bit later. Very important topic in .NET. So what I want you to notice, though, is the pattern. You'll start recognizing more patterns as you learn more about C Sharp and see this is how arrays work, and this is kind of how collections work, too, when we're able to declare and initialize all of the elements of an array as well as a collection in one line of code. Let's do this. Let's go below this and try a different example. We've been using integer values, but we can use it for any data type. And since we're using strings, let's go ahead and put in some names. And now we're gonna use a different type of for statement. Now you probably guessed how, what this is gonna do. We may have to come back and explain what it does though. So now in addition to our initial sequence that we used a for iteration statement, here we're using a for each to go through each item of our string. So as you can see, the for each statement, while it accomplishes something very similar, it's actually much simpler. And frankly, I use for each much more often because it works so well in this very scenario. For each simply iterates through the code block once for each element in the array. For each string inside of the names array, retrieve the value, store it in a variable called name, and then, uh, and, and that name will obviously be of type string, and then execute, execute this code block. Easy.
All right, so now we've seen how we can use for and for each to loop through arrays, but back to the topic of arrays. Whenever you store data inside of an array, you can perform many different built-in tasks using one of the methods that are available to arrays. And so a simple example is the array.reverse method. So let's do this. Let's write some more code. This is a famous historical quote. And now what we're going to do is create a different data type that we haven't looked at up to now, a character. In fact, we're going to create an array of characters and characters kind of like strings, except where a string is a string, a sequence of letters, a character is one letter, alphanumeric character. Okay. So what we're going to do is call this char array equals my text dot to char array. So the string data type has a method called to char array that will take each individual letter and put it into an array of characters. So now we have this char array and we can do something neat like this. So what do you suppose this array.reverse does based on its name? It'll take each item in the array and it will reverse its order. So if we were to do something like this then, And this time we're going to use right instead of right line. So we don't want a line break in between each character. Okay, so let's run the application and see what happens. All right, so we've taken our text and we reversed the order. So if we were to read this backwards, now is the time for all good men to come to the aid of their country. Just backwards, <laughs> okay? All right, so you can see that uh, we have quite a few options. When it comes to working with arrays, it has some powerful features that we haven't quite explored yet, but we will continue to build on this knowledge as time goes on. All right, so in this lesson, we primarily learned about arrays as a means of storing groups of data like numbers or strings or even individual characters as we've seen just now. Along the way, you learned about a few other important concept, concepts as well, uh, as well as some techniques. First of all, you declare arrays by defining the data type and adding a pair of opening and closing square brackets. Then you can either uh, declare the size of the array or you can initialize the values in the array using that opening and closing curly brace syntax. Uh, secondly, you use square brackets to access the individual elements of the array using a number inside of it or a value that represents a number. Arrays are always zero-based, and attempting to access an array element that's outside of the boundary of the array's length, or rather the number of elements in the array, will cause an exception to be thrown, an out-of-bounds or an out-of-index uh, 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 exception. Fourth, you can use the length property to find out exactly how many elements are inside of a given array. So you can use this information to then iterate through each element in an array using a for iteration statement. Or if you prefer, number five, you can use a for each iteration statement to iterate through each element in an array, which also extracts the value of each element into its own variable. And then finally, you can call array.reverse to uh, reverse the order of the elements inside of the array. Now we use it in a very simple case where we just reverse the order of individual characters, but this would apply no matter what the array is used for. There are also many other types of operations like that that you can perform on an array uh, and specifically the data inside of your particular array. Okay, so that's arrays. Learn more about them as time goes on. See you in the next video. Thank you.